I'd like to first of all introduce Susan Piggott and Cheryl Carter from the Kimberley region. Now you've all got their bios, so I don't need to go through them, but just so you know, um, Cheryl is a very uh, passionate fisherman and um, she tries to catch barramundi quite a bit. And um, Susan doesn't fish, but she will eat mud crabs if her husband's been successful and catches them and brings them home. So we're looking forward to hearing all about what's happening in the Kimberleys with de dental decay. We know that Aboriginal children have really much higher rates than um, the general population. So we're keen to hear how they're addressing it. Please join me in welcoming. Will you go Wara? Good afternoon everybody, my name is Cheryl Carter. My skin name is Nyabalu. I'm from Fitzroy Crossing, Western Australia and I belong to the Gunayandi, Walmajiri and Gija tribes of the language groups in the Kimberleys. I currently live and work in Broome as an Aboriginal research assistant. Before my colleague and I tell you about the Little Kids Dental Project, we would first like to acknowledge the traditional owners, the Palawakani people of the land on which we work and live and recognise their continuing connection to land, water and community and pay respect to the Elders past, present and emerging. Uliagur Garawa, good afternoon. My name is Sue Piggott. I'm a dental therapist and the project coordinator for this study. The study that Cheryl and I will be presenting today is about how dental care can be provided to young Aboriginal children living in the Kimberley of Western Australia. During the presentation, reference made to Aboriginal people includes both Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Firstly, I would like to give you a brief summary of the dental services available to children in WA. Children are able to access dental care from either private dental practitioners at their own cost or from government funded dental health services. Dental health services provides free general dental care for all children aged 5 to 17 through the school dental service from mobile vans and fixed dental clinics statewide. These clinics are staffed by dental and oral health therapists, dental clinic assistants and dentists. Dental Health Services also operates general dental clinics in metropolitan and country locations providing dental services to financially and geographically eligible West Australians which includes holders of health care cards and pension concession cards. Children aged zero to four years whose parents are eligible at a general dental clinic are also able to access care at these clinics with the children principally treated by dentists. Dental decay experienced by children under the age of six is described as early childhood caries. Early childhood caries can have a significant impact on the quality of life of the children and their carers. The child may suffer symptoms of pain, infection, difficulty in eating and sleeping, failure to thrive, missed opportunities for learning and psychological dysfunction, whilst parental and family distress and financial burden have an impact. Caries experience early in life is a predictor of caries in adulthood with oral conditions also having a significant impact on overall health. Providing dental care to young children is challenging for both the young patient and the clinician. Children under the age of six have limited capacity of cooperation and are often quite anxious. Commonly, dental treatment for the young preschool patient is provided in hospital under a general anaesthetic. In a recent report, Western Australia had the highest and increasing rate of hospital admissions of all states and territories for dental care. And significantly, the rate amongst Australian Aboriginal children was twice that of non-Aboriginal children among zero to four-year-olds. <clears throat> the National Child Oral Health Survey, conducted in 2011 to 2014, demonstrates the decay experience in baby teeth by children aged five to six years in Australia, Western Australia and the Kimberley. The DMFS is a score derived by counting the number of decayed, missing and filled surfaces of each tooth. Each tooth has five surfaces scored. The DMFT is the number of teeth either decayed, missing or filled. Here on the graph we can see WA children have less decay experience than the Australian average However, the Western Australian Aboriginal children experience decay at more than two times their West Australian and Australian peers. 
Sadly, most of this represents untreated dental disease and possibly requiring treatment under a general anaesthetic. Aboriginal children living in remote communities have severely limited access to specialised care. Therefore, alternative approaches to treating early childhood caries is urgently required. A recently completed test study in Perth, Western Australia, showed that treatment carried out by dental therapists for children with early childhood caries reduced the need for specialist care by 44% by using an approach called atraumatic restorative treatment, or ART. The results from the Perth pilot study indicate that the atraumatic restorative treatment may provide a successful model of dental care for young children. Therefore, the aim of this study will test that Aboriginal children living in the Kimberley can be provided with the appropriate dental care using the art-based approach. So, what is art? Atraumatic restorative treatment is an alternative way of treating dental decay. The standard dental treatment that most of us would be familiar with may involve the use of local anaesthetic and drills, both being the cause of many dental patients' fear or discomfort. The approach being tested in this study is aimed at repairing the teeth without causing fear or discomfort. Hand instruments are used in place of dental drills. The use of hand instruments is less invasive, better tolerated, tolerated by the patient and does not require the use of local anaesthetics. These before and after photographs show the teeth filled using only hand instruments. The art approach uses instruments to remove the soft decay from the tooth to allow placement of the filling without the use of local anaesthetic or drills. That is, no needles, no drills. Mechanically delivered air, water and suction are not essential for this procedure. The noise from this type of equipment can be quite distressing for the very young child. Art treatment is relatively quick and therefore lessens the time the child needs to be lying on the dental chair. These two fillings took about 10 minutes to complete. So for preschoolers, this approach to treatment is beneficial. Baby molar teeth can also be repaired with stainless steel crowns. I can see there. The crown is placed directly over the decayed tooth, again without the use of needles or drills. The conventional approach to filling teeth has relied on the removal of decay. By placing a crown sorry, completely over the tooth, the decay is starved of the nutrients it requires to remain active, and therefore can no longer progress. This is called the hall crown technique. A similar way of treating front baby teeth is also done by using a tooth coloured filling material. The children in this project who received these silver crowns as part of the art treatment affectionately called them Iron Man teeth. They were very well received by the patient and the parents with many children happily showing others their new teeth. They were so popular, children without decay were also asking for them to be put on their teeth. <laughs> The design of the Little Kids Dental Project is a cluster randomised controlled study. Aboriginal children aged zero to six years living in selected communities in the Kimberley are eligible for participation. The communities agreeing to participate are randomised into test group or control group. Parents and guardians are provided with study information, consent forms and questionnaires to complete with the questionnaires collecting information on childhood oral health related quality of life, child dental fear and parent dental fear. Both test and control groups receive a baseline dental assessment by a calibrated examiner at the time of recruitment. Children in the test group are offered treatment using the art approach while the children in the control group are advised to continue their standard dental care options. At the 12 month follow up, both groups receive a second dental examination with the control group offered the art-based care and the test group children receiving any required repairs or additional treatment. Parents from both arms of the study will be invited to take part in a focus group at the 12-month follow-up. Qualitative interviewing will help guide the parents in sharing their thoughts and perspectives on the care their children have received. The clinical care is provided by teams comprising of dental therapists and dental clinic assistants who have been specially trained in the art approach 
and are all very experienced in the care and management of young children in the dental setting and have a strong focus on patient engagement. So over in the west, the Kimberley region covers an area of over 400,000 square kilometres. To give you an idea of its size, it's larger than Tasmania and Victoria combined. Located north of the Capricorn, the Kimberley is defined by two seasons, the wet and the dry. The dry months, April to October, we have beautiful clear blue skies, cool easterly winds, balmy days and some chilly nights. The wet, however, well, that's a different story. November to March, it becomes very hot, humid, quite high temperatures, unpredictable storms and cyclones. The Kimberley is one of the most linguistically diverse areas in Australia. We have over 30 plus recognised languages in the Kimberley region and a number of dialects which make up the different landscapes, these being saltwater, freshwater, desert and ranges, all with strong cultural practices. English is a second language to many in the Kimberleys and Creole, a form of broken down English with language words mixed in, is spoken throughout the Kimberleys. So it makes it easier to understand, interpret and translate if you're Aboriginal and have connections either through family, marriage, skin groups or law. Twenty-six Aboriginal communities based on the population and anticipated number of children in our target group were identified for participation. These communities are spread throughout the north, east, south and west Kimberleys and over a thousand kilometres apart. All travel is by vehicle, along national highways, unsealed access roads and depending on local conditions, four-wheel drive tracks. As you can see on the map behind me, our trips, we clocked over 22,000 kilometres per vehicle in the months of February to November 2018. The bulk of the first year of the study has involved widespread community engagement. The study proposal was presented to CEOs of medical centres and cultural health services in the Kimberleys. We had face-to-face -face meetings wherever possible to present the study to chairpersons, CEOs and members of the community councils with the aim of inviting participation. An Aboriginal research officer with strong cultural awareness and the ability to speak local Aboriginal dialect, myself, was employed to assist in the engagement of Aboriginal communities and to provide advocacy and support to the participants. An Aboriginal reference group was formed with representatives from the local Aboriginal medical and cultural organisations, providing input with consultation and guidance. The reference group provided information and advice to the study coordinators on the project and on the communities initially identified to take part in the study. And based on this information, 25 communities became our target group. A resource kit called the Solid Teeth, Solid Child was specially designed as part of the study project. The kit contains flashcards designed as yarning boards and models relating to oral health messages. Training on the use of the kit is provided to a local community member and is left to promote and sustain capacity, capacity building and development in the community. Television and radio interviews on local Kimberley networks were carried out at the commencement of the study to raise awareness and invite participation. A project logo, team colours for display on vehicles, trailer, work shirts and promotional banners were designed, designed to give the study a unique identity. Leaflets and posters were sent out to each community prior to our team arriving. These were displayed at the community office, the health clinics, schools, daycares, playgroups and the local community stores. The local health agency and schools were presented with the study so they were able to assist us where they could. We also set up meet and greet sessions with fruit platters or sausage sizzles so families could be informed of what the study was about and to meet our staff involved. A project Facebook page was established and used to promote the study and advise of communities of our visits. During the consultation meetings with community leaders, we also sought opinions on the best place to work from. Our aim was to be in a location that was the most accessible and provide the best opportunity for recruitment of families with young children. Travelling with portable equipment meant we didn't have to be set up in dental specific rooms. Instead, we found ourselves working in community offices, playgroup or daycare centres, classrooms, libraries, music rooms, health centres and as you can see on a number of occasions outside under shaded verandas. These were the best locations, often providing a wonderful Kimberley view. Portable equipment such as fold-up patient chairs, 
lights, instruments, sterilisers, and here we have a handheld X-ray unit, were taken to each location. To lessen the impact on communities, we avoided the use of disposable items as practically as we could. All of our gear we transported in the trailer and the four-wheel drive vehicles. At the completion of 2018, we estimated that we had packed and unpacked our equipment no less than 80 times in a six-month period. Our research assistant, Cheryl, spent time engaging with families, explaining the study to potential participants at the time of recruitment, and assisting in the completion of consent forms and questionnaires. Cheryl also helped the children over the age of three with their responses to the dental fear and child health utility questions, often by talking in dialect or Creole and by using a faces scale chart. Our project team interacted and networked with participants, families and community members at each visit. We engaged with the children as much as possible. Time was spent establishing trust and a good relationship with staff and participants, so a welcoming atmosphere was created. Feedback received highlighted the value of developing trust is important and helps build strong relationships. Parental involvement is encouraged with the participants when participants attend their appointments. During the dental treatment, parents are provided with information and are shown what will be happening with their child, with some parents becoming involved and assisting in some manner, whether it be holding a mirror, showing the kids what was happening in their mouth. Very small children are examined on their parents' lap using the knee-to-knee -knee technique, while others were examined where they most felt comfortable if they were reluctant to sit in the dental chair. Our Facebook page provided the opportunity to inform of the project and with consent post photos. This aided with engagement in, in communities as many posts were liked and shared. Some posts reached over 2,000 people and had over 300 engagements. This demonstrates the power and benefit of social media in raising awareness and promoting the study. A store voucher was issued to each participating family at the time of recruitment and at the completion of treatment. This was to thank them for their time and commitment spent attending appointments and completing the questionnaires. Wherever possible, the vouchers were purchased from the local community stores. Our study is now into the second year and the 12-month follow-up examinations and treatment are currently taking place. 25 communities accepted the offer to participate. 338 children have been recruited into the study with 163 recorded as male and 170 as female. Some participants did not record gender. 177 were randomised into our test group and 156 in the control group. And the average age of the child participating in our study is three and a half years. Our early baseline data indicates that the study participants have a DMFS of around nine and a DMFT of around four, which is well above and nearly three times the decay experienced by the children in the National Child Oral Health Survey. So to put these figures into reality, imagine a three-year-old child. Could be your child, grandchild, niece or nephew. This child has 20 teeth and with these figures, one in five teeth are affected with early childhood caries and there is an average of nine surfaces that are either decayed, missing or filled. These are worrying figures especially as we know, dental decay in childhood is a predictor of decay experience in adulthood. There is a high mobility of families in communities and follow-up can be challenging. Following the baseline assessment of the children at the very first test community, the clinical team arrived three weeks later to provide the dental care, only to find none of the original participants residing there. The study approach was then adapted to plan for the art treatment being offered at the same time as the baseline assessment. Okay. Okay. So um, just some more of the challenges that we have along there as well. And then just as we've run out of time now, um, we just like to do some acknowledgement. Um, like any project, we would not be able to continue our research without the support given. We wish to acknowledge the NHMRC funded grant, the Aboriginal Medical Services of the Kimberley, 
Nindan and Gary Cultural Health Services, the 25 communities visited and the participants and their families. Special thanks also go to the clinical team for their dedication and commitment to providing the best possible outcome for the children of the Kimberley. Thank you for your attendance. <laughs>